It was the year 1997, a beta test for the new and up and coming MMORPG Ultima Online was taking place. August 9th was this day. On this fabled beta test, Lord British, the game's developer, himself, decided to pay a visit to the lowly peasants of Britannia. Huge swarms of people gathered in the streets to pay their respect to the king, but there was one man who had something else on his mind. This man's name was Reigns. Normally, Lord British was immune from all damage like many other lords of the world, but this invulnerability had a weakness. It did not persist over multiple game sessions. Shortly after the arrival of Lord British, the realms had gone offline. Upon their restart, Lord British forgot to reenact his invulnerability. This left him exposed to Rain's assassination plot. He casted a spell called Firefield on Lord British, Lord Blackthorn. Not knowing that Lord British forgot to re-enable his invulnerability, mocked the crowd at their feeble attempt of assassination. Unbeknownst to Lord British though, his character went down, leaving him dumbfounded. The assassination of Lord British led to a full-scale investigation on the Kingslayer Reigns himself, concluding with his indefinite imprisonment, aka a ban. After a series of witnesses came forth accusing Reigns of exploiting bugs within the game rather than reporting them to the developers, after the death of Lord British, one of his loyal cabinet members, Star Long, known as Lord Blackthorn, summoned hordes of demons who ran through the streets slaughtering the innocent bystanders. This caused the local townsfolk beta testers to raise their pitchfork and torches. They proceeded to march upon the gates of the lords in protest of the banning of reigns and the merciless killing of the innocent bystanders. With the conclusion of the beta test, the game launched on September 24th, 1997, exactly 46 days after the beta. It was one of the first MMORPGs made, and with the rapidly improving technology at the time, Ultima Online was arguably the most advanced MMO graphically and mechanically for many years to come. The project began in 1995 with a five-man team consisting of Richard Garriott, Star Long, Rick Delashmit, Scott Phillips, and a bit later, Raf Coaster who eventually became the lead designer. At the time of its release, the game managed to gather a whopping 100,000 subscriptions in the first six months, which was huge for the era of dial-up internet, which caused massive lag problems on the server. Two years later, the developers began to open up multiple servers in different countries around the world to support the growing demand for their game. Then eventually, the year 2000 came, and the lead designer, Lord British himself, Garriott, resigned from origin and with him his in-game persona of lord british vanished from the world as well in the following months the developers implemented a worldwide event in which hordes of undead would lay siege to the city of trinsic these type of community driven events is what set ultima apart from other games during the time and it is why the game is fondly remembered by many as one of the greatest mmorpgs of all time the game was so successful, it received 8 Guinness World Records. Ultima Online went on to release 8 expansions, starting with Ultima Online The Second Age in October 1st, 1999, which added the Lost Lands, an in-game chat system, and new creatures. The second was Ultima Online Renaissance in May 4th, 2000, which doubled the size of the world. The two new playable areas were named after the two moons in Britannia. Luca and Trama. The Trama world was basically a modern day PvE server that you'd find in the likes of World of Warcraft. Feluca, however, adopted a darker, more foreboden look and kept its player vs player roots intact. Ultima Online, the third dawn, is the third one, and it was added in March 7th of 2001. This new expansion included a 3D client. A special third dawn only land was created called Ilshinar. It was only accessible to people using the 3D client until the release of Lord Blackthorn's Revenge a year later. Speaking of which, Lord Blackthorn's Revenge came out in February 24th, 2002. This brought, quote unquote, a dark new world based on new characters from Todd McFarlane. The main features of this expansion were improved AI systems and better character customization. 
Ultima Online Age of Shadows followed, which launched February 11, 2003. It brought with it the Malas, two new character classes, the Paladin and the Necromancer, as well as customizable player housing. Not only that, but the entire balance of the game was shifted with the item system rework. Armor resistance was split into five types and many new properties that affected the gameplay were added to the weaponry. Good equipment suddenly became a lot more important. This expansion also brought with it something called item insurance. During the release of this expansion is where Ultima Online hit its peak player base at 250,000 accounts. A year later in November of 2004, an expansion based on Japanese mythology is released. This expansion also launched with two new Japanese themed classes, the Ninja and the Samurai. Not only this, but a new area based on Japan dubbed the Tokuno Isles was added to the game. The addition of the Ninja, Samurai, and new skills finally brought an end to the overwhelming dominance of mage builds in PvP. Ultima Online Monday's Legacy followed, released on August 30th of 2005, it introduced brand new dungeons, a new skill called spell weaving, and elves as a playable race. A whole four years later, Ultima Online Stygian Abyss launched September 8th, 2009, with a brand new playable race, the Gargoyle. Not only this, but they added additional play areas as well as three new skills. These skills were imbuing, throwing, and mysticism. The expansion also brought many updates to the enhanced client. Finally, Ultima Online Time of Legends launched three years ago in 2015. This expansion came with Shadowguard and Valley of Eden, two new playable areas. This expansion also brought in changes to the virtue system, brand new items, new skills and masteries, as well as player housing improvements. My name is Brandon. Uh, I go by the handle Deuteronomy over the last 10-15 years or so. I'm, I live in the Northwest currently, grew up on the Gulf Coast, uh, right outside New Orleans. I was mostly in the Gulf Coast area when I was, I was playing UO in the early days. I don't have any like YouTube. I mean, I have a YouTube channel, but like it's usually just for uploading videos. It's not for uh, any kind of public uh, appearances or public, you know, Twitch streaming or anything like that. It's usually just for, you know, videos or recordings. Uh, but I don't really have a, a social media presence other than, you know, private Facebook. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. How old were you when you started playing Ultima Online? And in what year was this? Yeah, so I was 12 years old, um, about to turn 13. This was the summer of 1998. Uh, June 1998 is when my my account was created. All right, nice. I've been playing for a long ass time, man. Yeah, almost 20 years. How did you hear about Ultima Online, and what provoked you to start playing it? I remember uh, seeing in the electronic boutique store, I don't even know if they're around anymore, but I remember seeing the black box. It had like the Velcro cover on the front of it. Like inside it had the cloth map and the pewter UO symbol, you know, pin that you could, could wear and all, all sorts of fun little stuff that Richard Garriott uh, was known to put in his games. But I remember like the box and it had like, are you with us on the back? Um, and I just, I remember like that, that looks amazing. Uh, I was a console player up to that point and I just gotten like a Windows 95 computer. I remember seeing the box. I was really interested in Duo and what it was, at least what it, what it appeared to be. I mean, I had been playing Diablo at the time. So like, that's kind of how I learned about it, but I didn't get to play it at first. Like the internet at the time was still very new. Uh, like AOL was the big thing, you know, like all the thousands of hours of cds or whatever that you got in the mail um so instead i had gotten like the ultima collection so i kind of learned about like oh ultima is this big series that i had no idea about i played that leading up to that summer and like i said that summer i was by that time i was able to actually get it um that june of uh, 1998 yeah nice man so what are your best and most fond memories from ultima online and you can say as many as you want i like this is the thing that i want this is the thing I want most, is like a veteran's most memorable moments of what made Ultima Online a great game. Yeah, so I've, I've thought about it, and uh, as I've mentioned, there's a lot. Um, I mean, I could, I could talk for hours and hours and hours on just random stuff that I came across and saw and did and just 
Um, but I'm going to try to keep it as chronological as possible so you can kind of get an idea of how the game shifted and kind of how things changed over time. Um, I'll start with literally like the first five minutes of the game because I do remember that very clearly. I started off in Minoc, right outside the Barnacle. The Barnacle's the tavern in Minoc. And I remember coming out of the tavern, and I attacked a bird. I saw a bird in town. And I'm immediately guard-whacked. Just straight up, five, not even five minutes in the game at this point. I'm already killed. I'm dead. I'm a ghost. Everything's in grayscale. And I don't know anything about the game because, you know, the game comes with like a little cheat sheet of like, this is how you double click and this is how you click and drag and this is how you use a skill. And that's about it. Like they had no instructions for this game. actually. So I get guard whacked, have no idea what happened, didn't realize that blue meant it was tamed by somebody. And I start wandering around and I go end up at the bank, didn't know it at the time. And people are what I think just ignoring because I'm asking, like, like, how do I be not dead anymore? And how do I fix this? And what happened? Of course, I think they're ignoring my questions, but I didn't realize that you have to have a spirit speak skill in order to actually, like, like interact and talk with ghosts. So I think they're just ignoring me. Um, some of them are actually telling me to, like, do this or go there. And I'm thinking they're telling me, like, to buzz off. But basically, they were actually giving me instructions to the healers. So I kind of just wander around, eventually log off, create a new character, and that that was my first like five minutes, five to fifteen minutes of the game. I get I create a new character. Um, I st I still go into Minoc because it's the only town that I'm vaguely aware of at this point, and I get a job with a a local miner. I think his name was Handel H A N D E L, and he uh. He bought ingots cheap from newbies. He was like, I'll give you pick, um, pickaxes, and you can go to the Mount Kendall mines, and you can mine and get ore, and you can use the ore to smelt into ingots, and you can sell the ingots to me, and I'll buy them. He'll buy them for like six gold, where you could sell them, or he'll buy them for you know five gold or whatever, and uh, you could sell them for like four gold to the NPC. So if he went to buy them from the NPCs, he'd be like eight gold. So he was kind of making a... You know, like you were making more money selling it to him, and he was saving money by not having to buy it from the NPCs or maybe some price gougers who were selling it for six or seven gold. <clears throat> so um, that's kind of how I got introduced to mining. I go to Mount Kindle, and then I got introduced to PK <laughs> and, 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 and thieves. And so, uh, you know, there were these thieves that would come through, uh, kill pack horses, kill players. Uh, I remember like charging them with like no swordsmanship, just like swinging at them and them just laughing and just fireballing me in the face, um, blind looting me. I also learned that with that money that I could go then buy ale and get drunk. Like I said, I'm 12 years old at the time. So me stumbling around drunk and puking is like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so that was kind of my experience, uh, my first sort of experiences um, in UO. And I remember very clearly going, "Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be an anti PK, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a good guy." And I heard about Trinsic and Paladins being there, and that's a whole other story that I won't get into tonight. But basically, like that was my <laughs> that was my focus was I was gonna be a good guy someday which we'll come back to. <laughs> uh, I do remember another time I had met a buddy, Chalangalang, who was a miner as well. And he was like, hey, dude, let's go to Vesper. Now, understand that Vesper is like five screens away <laughs> from Minoc. It is like a 30, 45 second run from, from Minoc to Vesper. There's nothing. You know, there's, this isn't a far distance. This isn't like a trip to Mordor or anything like that. This is just down the street. But to me, it felt like it was you know, this grand adventure to some other country, like wandering these woods. I have no idea where I'm going. And uh, he's like, we're going to go grave robbing. Let's go to, let's go to the Vesper Cemetery to grave rob. By the way, I don't think you can actually rob graves. Uh, but he gave me a shovel. He gave me a weapon. Uh, I think he gave me a mace, which I wasn't a mace fighter. So that wasn't going to help me any. And we go off to adventure, and we go to the Vesper Cemetery, and it's just giant rats and small rats and slimes and 
and we can't heal each other and we don't know what we're doing and he gets killed he gets covered in these monsters and he gets killed i'm not near him kind of on the outskirts of this big zerg of monsters and uh, i run away so now i'm in vesper my buddy died and i have never seen him again since that was <laughs> 1998 i never saw him again in my life and he was my buddy in minoc and i never saw him again so telang lang here's this how you doing bud um i was ryu and uh i let you down i guess but <laughs> so that was like a very like pivotal moment for me because i always look for this guy after the fact like oh my god whatever happened to him and um i you know in minoc i had met a girl uh nicole and you know, she was like a crush, and she was my age. You know, again, we're I'm 12 or maybe 13 by this time. And, like, I come back from Vesper after a week. Like I said, this is right up the road, but I feel like I'm I'm stranded in this other town altogether. And I finally come back, and I just remember telling people, like, I've been on an adventure. I, I've seen things, you know, <laughs> like, I'm this coming back from Nam or something like that. It's like you were in another town, and you got attacked by slimes. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not the same, but whatever. Like, these people are, like, tamers and GM mages and all sorts of stuff. But, um, but yeah, so that was kind of, like, one of my, my first forays. Um, well, what year do you think Ultima Online was at its very best? Uh, or what was, like, your favorite expansion? Yeah, so k kind of the year is hard because every year I got to experience something different. Like, you could kind of see that with the stories as they kind of progressed. Yep. Um, I'd say anything Feluca-based is the best, though. Kind of, that was why i kind of talked about that the piracy and stuff which is what we're still doing today even though much of my mercenary work came after trammel i would say anything pre you know pre trammel or feluca base is where you're going to get the, the most out of the game but honestly there's never been a good expansion or a good era game wise for uo i would say angel island which was that free shard i mentioned earlier took the good things that uo did and made them better in terms of balance engaging pvp gameplay and again it was Beluga based. All right, nice. So, um, what about Ultima Online's worst state? Do you think it had like a worst year for yeah. it? Yeah, uh, for sure. Pretty much anything after Age of Shadows and the following expansions made the game a lot worse. Uh, it made the game grindy. It became about item based, like PVM and uh, items, and and could be blessed and insured really easily. So, like, there was no more looting anymore. Items didn't break really. I mean, it was really cool because it made warriors very powerful for once instead of just mages. But, you know, because of the item-based nature of the game, it just, it wasn't really skill-based anymore. Huge skill gaps between the haves and the have-nots. And that really was never what UO was about. Remember the story about me out in the woods just killing people with a crossbow with 50 or 60 archery using a hatchet that I got from punching a skeleton in the face. Like, that was UO. And now all of a sudden you've got these one or two shot weapons because you you grind doom dungeon all day or you, you do raid bosses i mean i would say age of shadows and every expansion since then beyond a doubt made the game worse so is there like so um like what would you say for someone like me a new player how, would you how what would you recommend me like getting into the game is there any way to experience the game as it was back then or is it kind of long gone by now so that's actually a pretty good question because that is the question every single UOer asks, and they don't like to hear the answer. Um, the UOers will say, oh, what we need is, let me look at Legends of Aria, look at Albion Online. You'll see an isometric uh, kind of minimalist mechanic, right, a game with looting, with killing players, with bounty hunting maybe, um, with housing maybe. And they'll say, like, oh, this is UO. We're going to make UO great again. You know, we're going to do this. We're going to bring UO back. And it, that's simply not the case. Because what made UO amazing was, one, it was fresh. It was new. Um, I was in Delucia. I made friends with a 50-year-old preacher and a 14-year-old cheerleader. You know, you just don't have those experiences anymore. And this is while I'm killing people outside of town. But I, these people were still my friends, as nerdy as I was. And you don't have those experiences so much anymore because games today and will will divide them up like this is a PvP server, this is a PVM server. Yeah. Well, free shards kind of do the same thing. They're either this is kind of a trammel server, 
or this is a hardcore PvP server. Now they may not they may not launch saying that, but the mechanics in place make it that way. Like, oh well, here comes five mages with precast spells. They run on your screen, drop you, kill you. And it's like, oh, well, that's how UO was. It's like, no, that's how free shards are because we have voice chat now. We didn't have voice chat in the 90s and the early 2000s. Not really, anyway. I mean, I remember being on a three-way call with my my head at a 45-degree angle holding the phone in my head talking to my friends down the street. Like, And it was a different a different voice chat kind of situation. Um, you know, I, you don't have the voice chat. You don't have the third-party programs, you know, today, like, you know, we didn't have those back in the early 2000s and 90s. Not really. If we did, you were cheating. So or you're a scummer if you were. But now you have to take those things into consideration. And I don't think the devs or the free shards are doing that. So like I would tell anybody else, if you want that experience, first of all, you have to find a Faluka-based server. Um, the one that I'm looking forward to right now is UO Outlands. It's, uh, come, it's in beta right now. They're taking a lot of time with it, and they're putting a lot of emphasis on on the PVM and the exploration, it's actually a whole new map, so it kind of you know keeps things fresh for everybody, old UOers and new UOers alike. It is Faluka based. There is killing and murdering, and the thing that was kind of the problem that created issues with Trammel, like no repercussions for Reds, they're addressing that and they're addressing some of the modern issues that free shards deal with players. So, if you were looking for a free shard that had, I'd say that kind of experience or at least that potential for an experience where the devs understood and appreciated the role players like the gms did back in the day like with the trinsic war and everything and the trinsic invasion i would say uo outlands right now is probably your best bet it's in beta uh, i'll send you some stuff if you're interested in looking at it but yeah i, I, am, say... I actually wanted to keep playing the game but i'm, I'm not I'm kind of like i don't really know what the shards are i'm on the all i know is i'm I, I downloaded the client. I'm playing on a high pop shard. I think it's Atlantic and yeah, Atlantic. And like, is that so? That's the modern game, right? Or is that is that? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's gonna be the the actual game, the actual production. You. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you would would you suggest I keep playing there, or should I wait for whatever? Uh, what what did you say? What's called again? It's called UO Outlands, and honestly, I would, I would, you know, keep playing on it. I mean, UO Outlands is still in beta, but if you want to kind of see what UO has become, go ahead, kind of play around, go explore, see the content. They added a ton of content over the years. Granted, if you're doing, are you paying for it, or are you doing the endless journey? Um, I'll, I haven't paid for anything yet. I'm just gonna. Okay, just a trial or whatever. Yeah, just a trial. I'm okay. gonna see if I see try and get into it. Maybe I'll pay for it. Honestly, it, it's it's a it's a grind, and I think that's where UO started to fail. Was it, you know, Eve Online is successful because it's different, and UO was different. But then it tried to become Diablo, it tried to become EverQuest, it tried to mm -hmm. become other games, and that's not what made it popular. Yeah, <laughs> it's not exactly. why people wanted to play it. That's why people still don't play it. You know, that's why they play free shards. Most of the players that actually play UO are not on UO; they're on the free servers. So, uh, I mean, play around with it if you want. Um, I would say there's also UOF, UO Forever. That's been around for a couple years. Um, that's where the trading company in the city of Trinsic, which is uh, what I created back in the day, the Vesper Commerce Commission, that's where we did those things. And uh, it, that's not a bad server. It's just, it's been around a while. There's a lot of drama. There's arguably some corruption. GMs, I mean, it comes out. But um, I think Outlands is probably going to be one of the better experiences for you when that does go from beta to, to live. All right, definitely keep me updated on that. So just throw like a just a random number, anything that comes to your head. Well, not anything, but try to like try to keep it accurate. How many hours do you think you've played the game for? Just like I know it's hard to pinpoint exactly, but just whatever you estimate. Well. I've been playing UO since 98 with about two or three years off, like over, you know, like on and off, but probably about two or three years total that I haven't been playing, maybe a little bit more than three years. Yeah. I'd say probably like 20,000 hours. Oh, damn, man. So anyways, uh, how do you think Ultima Online compared to other MMORPGs like in that era? Like, how, how much better was Ultima than other games right at the time? Well, I, it, like I said, it's the experience. Um, it's what makes Ultima still better than most games to this day. Uh, it's why I'm looking forward to Star Citizen. I mean, that's that's my that's my big hype right now, um, because it's gonna 
I, mean, I have no interest in sci-fi or piloting a ship or anything, but as soon as I read Death of a Spaceman and realized there's permadeath, you could steal people's ships and loot them and hold them hostage and everything else, I was like, this is UO. This is this is what this is these are the mechanics that you need, the sandbox mechanics. You absolutely need to create the exact same feeling of Ultima Online, and uh, and so when it, we're looking at other games at the time like Diablo or or even other MMOs, uh, DAOC, you know, Dark Age of Camelot, you've got WoW, uh, Anarchy Online. It was about the game, and um, I mean honestly, ah, you know, I I don't think, and I've kind of talked about like the the mix of players. You don't have that kind of mix when divide your players between pvp servers and pvm servers when you have a theme park you divide your players and so you don't get that kind of interaction and that that meaningful community so i would say that um when it compared to other games the other games were just really bad versions of single player games that you could play with a lot of people um i always submit that mmos are either terrible games or terrible mmos if it's a good game it's a bad mmo if it's a good mmo it's probably a bad game because you know what i actually kind of think the same thing honestly all right so i was playing a little bit earlier but i lost all the footage you know so we were recording with the stream setting so it was only recording audio and it kind of corrupted and stuff so we're shit out of luck there but basically what i did was i went this way east and i killed some undead dudes and i was trying to level up my swordsmanship got the quests here Got some money for uh, some escort quests. We have some bandages, some po. We got some potions, but I drank them all. Yeah, basically the bag's just full of shit. I met some players, and one guy even gave me this this fletching tool. Right? I wish I got that on. I wish I didn't lose the footage, but I'm just gonna continue on with this. I don't want to block with a shield. Okay, so I'm just gonna buy some more potions. See, as you can see, there's still a good number of players online. Kind of uh, reassuring. Open bank box. Let's deposit all my money. All right, let's go. Wait, there's a player. Let's let's say hello. Come on, dude. Where are you going? Hi. Uh, let's see if he stops. I invited him to my party. He's gonna teach me the ways. <laughs> We're in a party, dude. This bull is a maniac. Holy shit, man. That thing was a beast. Come on, my dude. Me and my boy going east. I've already made a friend, man. This game is more, uh, people are nicer around here than they are on WoW for sure. I've not met one rude person so far. Everyone here has been so damn nice. Oh shit. Pissed off the wizard. No. I'm gonna keep running. Dude, this guy, these wizards are nasty. Come on, hit him, dude. Oh. Oh my god. Oh. These things hit hard as hell, man. This kid, fuck you. Get domed. Get hot. 
Get owned, dude. Man, why are people so much nicer in this game than they are in WoW? Maybe because everything in this game is kind of like grindy, so you may as well just be nice to people and chill. More of a social game. I don't know why that sound makes me laugh every time. Oh, is this a grizzly bird coming for me? But these ball cats are nuts. Come on, crit him, dude. Oh, get don't oh, shit. Come on. Four percent. Oh, that was close. You know, this guy hates the class, like the, all the, all the old guys, all the old guys hate the new one, but macros create. Man, this game is so complex. Wait, you can merge macros together. Dude, shout out to Bobby Big Biceps, teaching me how to do macros and everything. Get dome zombies. Easy mode. Man, these guys are just responding like mad. Wait, what is going on here? What is this guy? What the f- <laughs> What is going on? Oh, gimme gimme Come back, my dude. I'm coming. Where's my boy Bobby? We gotta make a guild. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Where are you, Bobby? There he is. <laughs> Flex. Dude, he just. I thought I was gonna. I thought I was gonna. No drop party, man. Where's the drop party? Really positive, you know. I'll definitely uh. Definitely be playing more of this game, for sure. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> Monk <of> TOS, dude. <laughs> dude, he's eating. He's eating shit. Man, it's so sad. My boy Bobby's leaving me. The power of friendship and the internet. Oh, why? I happen to do. It just so happens that I do. Man, this is fun. People are so nice in this game. Yes. That is me. <laughs> Bobby, me and Bobby are in Discord, man. It's Bobby Big Biceps and I. Already made a friend, man. Feels good. Feels good, man. All right. Well, um, honestly, enough time spent for my first impressions. So far, they're like, they're really positive, you know. Hear me out here. 
I can understand the appeal to the old school classic client with its minimalistic UI, but for me personally, I was getting really bad eye strain from trying to read the small text, and also while my character was moving through the town, the background seemed to be a bit jumpy which was also causing me a bit of eye strain. I had to stop playing after about an hour, and was left with a minor headache for the rest of the night. I think I probably could have configured it better and changed the text settings, but my feeble 20 IQ WoW brain clearly isn't enough to handle such a complex interface. So I ended up going with the enhanced client, which I actually really like. I know, it's hearsay to all you classic boys out there, but as a new simple minded World of Warcraft player I felt right at home. The macro system in this game is also amazing. I know absolutely nothing about it really, but from what I've looked at and read about, the things you can do with it, and the ways you can combine multiple commands into a single macro left me feeling overwhelmed, but excited at potentially learning how to master it in the future. For new players familiar with more modern user interfaces and combat systems, the UI will be a bit of a hurdle for you, but using the enhanced edition makes it a lot more accessible for us WoW plebs to get into the game. So what are my first impressions after the couple hours that I've spent in the game? I genuinely had a ton of fun playing the short amount of time that I did. I chatted with some cool people and even made a new friend in my first 3 hours of playing. I'm not sure what it is about the game in particular, but I've been getting an urge to log in and play it. Then there's the game's skill system. Being able to prioritize skills to level up, lock skills so they remain the same, and even lose skill points in certain areas to speed up the training of other skills provides you with a rich experience. It's been quite some time since I felt the urge to keep playing a game over and over again, but for some reason this game's kinda doing it for me. I'm looking forward to overcoming the steep learning curve and experience all it has to offer in the coming weeks. If you're interested in playing with me, feel free to join my Discord. If you're interested in keeping up to date on my progress and eventually hearing my final thoughts on the game, feel free to hit that subscribe button.